Coming to you from an undisclosed location, somewhere deep in the heart of the Santa Monica Mountains, I am your intrepid host, L.A. Marzulli. Welcome to another episode of Questions with L.A. We'll get into your questions, but first, a word from our trusted sponsor. Have you ever wondered what happened to the legendary Chuck Norris? I recently saw a video he made, and I was shocked. The man is in his 80s and still kicking butt and working out and staying active. So here's a true story. We lost a house in 2018, and uh, we moved over to Thousand Oaks down in the valley. And um, it was culture shock. Peggy and I had PTSD. Anyway, there was a YMCA there, and I joined it. Um, and I, there was a workout. There were two workout trailers, I believe. And the trailers were, were really good size, double wides. And they had all this workout equipment in them. I go in there on a Sunday morning, and I start working out. And there's this older guy in there with me. And uh, I'm following him on, on the circuit as we're going around the machines. And I'm realizing that this... This guy is, is, is packing some guns up here. I mean, I'm doing one of these presses like this, and he's doing 40, 50 pounds more than, than my maximum weight. He's about my height. He's also got some paper in his hand. It looks like a script. So I strike up a conversation, and I go, wow, you're really, you're really lifting some uh, heavy weights here. I guess, you know, you've been doing this for, oh, yeah, I've been doing this forever, blah, blah, blah. Um, you're trying out for a part, and he kind of grins and looks at me and goes, yeah, yeah, it's a script. So we keep working out. You know, I, I don't bother him anymore. As I'm getting ready to leave, I go, hey, nice meeting you. Hope to see you again. Good luck with the part. Hope you get it. So I'm, <laughs> this is a true story, folks. I'm walking out to the car and the light bulb goes off. Oh, my gosh, that's Chuck Norris. It's like, you know, hello. And it's, that's happened more than once. The bottom line is this is true. Uh, this is no hype. He's in amazing shape. Okay, let's continue. What's even more shocking is he's stronger, can work out longer, and even has plenty of energy left over for his grandkids. He did this by just making one change. He says he still feels like he's in his 50s. His wife even started doing this one thing too, and she never felt better. She says she feels 10 years younger. Her body looks leaner, and she has energy all day. Chuck made a special video that explains everything. Make sure you watch it by going to chuckdefense.com forward slash LA or by clicking in the link below this video. It will change the way you think about your health. Once again, that's chuckdefense.com forward slash LA. Click on the link in the description below to watch the video now. You won't believe how simple it is. Just a reminder. The legendary Chuck Norris is a whopping 84 years old and yet has more energy than I do. He discovered he could create dramatic changes to his health simply by focusing on three things that sabotage our body as we age. Folks, check this out. Please go to the description box below, chuckdefense.com forward slash LA, www.chuckdefense.com forward slash LA. Thanks for tuning in, folks. We're up to 225,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for for being here. And, um, you know, I just know that a, a lot of people who subscribe and, and want to get updates never get them. So that's another story. And I, I really, hopefully in this new administration, things will change and we won't have a type of censorship of Christian ministries that, that seem to be prevalent on certain social media platforms. And that's all I'll say about that. Okay, let's get right into it. If you've got a question, shoot me an email, questions at lamarzulli.net questions at lamarzulli.net. Before I launch into it, don't forget our Christmas store. Lots of great deals there, lamarzulli.com, lamarzulli.com. Run to the disclosure. Um, it might be becoming a best-selling book. I don't know. But according to my publisher, Charisma, it's, it, they're flying off the shelves, selling like hotcakes. So we'll see where it goes. All right. Um, yes, we've already got... Let me, let me just... Sorry about that, folks. This is from Christy. What are your thoughts on the destruction of a Georgia Guidestones? Who was behind it, and what is the significance of the timing? Um, really interesting there. I've wondered about it. I have been to the Georgia Guidestones when they were there. Um, Chris Pinto has done a film on it, and he tracked it down. Uh, bully for Chris, great job. And basically, we know who R.C. Christian was and is, and... Um, it, it is sort of alarming. The Guidestones are alarming because it talks about the idea that um, the population of the earth needs to be reduced. 
And there's this, there was this hold code there. So were they, uh, they were partially destroyed, but then the powers that be came in and completely destroyed the re what was left of it. So they were damaged with the original, um, and by the way, law enforcement, to the best of my knowledge, has never brought anyone to justice. So that in itself is interesting. But the Guidestones were damaged, and then they just came and completely tore them down. I mean, I have uh, a film, not really a film, but just clips of at the, at the Georgia Guidestones. And uh, very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. But um, we'll go from there. Anyway, I want to show you this, and you can see this wisp right here. I'm going to push in on this, John, so the folks can see it. It is right, right here. Watch that as I push in. So that's it. You, you can see it. I can see it. I'm looking at the monitor. So you get this, you get this wisp of light right in this area right here. See that? So, you know, what is that? And something seems to be manifesting. And, you know, I always try to go to the natural explanation first before I go into the supernatural. So looking at it, I would say, because notice how the window is really lit up. See that? See the way the window is lit up? This might be some kind of a reflection. Um, it could be, because we don't know the angle of the sun, obviously it's not coming from the closet. But I would, I would say that somehow it's reflecting the sunlight in some way. Whether or not dust is being illuminated by the sun, it's, I, I don't know. But I'm not, I'm not going to the supernatural on this one at all. I think it, it's just a very, very natural explanation. I'll show it to you again. And that is, look, look at the sun coming through the window. So that, that's what I go to uh, first, white light and ghostly images. So let me get to this one. Hold on, folks. So this was uh, an image, UFOs are real burgeoning, not going away. Uh, it's right here. This is from Willie. Received a photo from a friend and received this photo from her friend. This image was seen in the sky in Palm Beach, Florida. It's a typical close encounters of the first kind. It's just an orb of light. You can see it right there. Nothing really to write home about. This is close encounters of the first kind. It's light in the sky. Um, I've seen one of my uh, sightings, my second sighting, with Peggy in the car. She was driving, I was in the driver's seat, was similar to this. Just a light in the sky. When the light begins to dance around, move in, uh, in, in right angles, zip this way, zip that way, you know you're not in Kansas anymore. That's why you come up and you rebuke first um, and ask questions later. And Maria writes, hello, L.A., why are so many of these supernatural events found and happening in Ohio? Ohio has 10,000 what I would call Nephilim mounds in it, used to. And this, this, the, the, the skeletons of the giants were there. Ohio is the home of the largest earthworks on the planet, specifically the Octagon Mound, the Circle Mound, um, Geller Hill, all this, it's very complex. We are, and, and this, folks, uh, just honestly, we are where I'm, I'm in post-production on a film about the Octagon Mound and the Circle Mound. Once this is done, depending on finances, uh, we, will, we will show it in the theater in Newark, Ohio. That's the plan. We will have a, a question and answer where people can come in. They'll have to write their questions down. We'll have our panel up on the stage, and we'll be able to answer some of those questions. But we want to we wanna debut the film in Newark, Ohio. That's how important we think this is. We have discovered information which I can't talk about at the moment, but it'll be in the film. I think it's groundbreaking, and I think it pulls the covers off of the, uh, the status quo, what we're told from mainstream archaeology. I'm entitled to my opinion, just like you're entitled to yours, just like mainstream archaeology is entitled to theirs. But what's the truth? What's the truth? By the way, before I get into it, I want to thank Brad Myers for creating this wonderful track, which we have here, and uh, you can... Go to our website, lamarzuli.com. When you buy something, Peggy, my lovely wife, puts like four or five of these things with every order to hand out. If you want like 50 of them, then, you know, we need, we need some help financially. But it's a great track, lots of information. And, you know, there was a saying I came up with in the book 
uh, the first book of the Nephilim trilogy, and that was The Coming Great Deception. I call the UFO phenomena and the revealing of the so-called extraterrestrial entities, which are not for ETs, by the way. These are interdimensional entities that have a very nefarious agenda. Just watch our fourth film on, <clears throat> on abductions or our sixth film on cattle mutilations. Very, very nefarious agenda. So going back, Maria, to your question, you've got the Nephilim Mounds there. Remember when we had our Nephilim Mounds conference, Gary Stearman, Russ, the late Russ Dizdar, Chief Joseph Riverwin, Fritz Zimmerman, and myself, we're all talking about the mounds. And that's where Gary Stearman took us to school. When he talked about his presentation, he led off as a place of honor. He was the keynote. Um, it's all about the seed. That was the title of his presentation. It's all about the seed. What was he talking about? The Genesis 315 narrative. It's dismissed. It's poo-pooed amongst many Christians. People say it's not really what it says. They're, they, you know, angels can't procreate with, with human beings. And they cite the, the scripture where Jesus where it tells us we'll be like the angels never given in marriage. But it doesn't say anything about procreation. Just, just let that sit and percolate with it. They did the unthinkable. They did the unthinkable. They procreated with the women of earth, the human women of earth. I love this. I can move this thing around. But I digress. Let's go on to the next one. This is from Sarah. I would like to talk to L.A. about some encounters I've had over the last two decades. Four to be exact, I have recently discovered L.A.'s work. I know I'm on the correct path. That's from Sarah, Sarah McCloskey. Um, Sarah, I'm going to have to email you, and I'm, I've set your email to the side. I will do that. <clears throat> and um, if you're willing to come on a Zoom chat, we can also pixelate your face, um, if you, or we can just keep your video out of it completely. But testimonies like yours are really important. Why? Because they validate the physicality of the phenomena. Folks, this is real. Abductions are real. They are not something of, uh, you know, UFO pretend stuff, or it's a construct. People are taken. Sperm is taken from the men. Ovum is taken from the women. Hybrids are being created. I mean, how much information do we have to have? Why am I even having this conversation? Why? After decades of research, there is a physicality. Once again, we will be talking about the physicality at the Property Watchers Conference in Branson. Live streaming is available. You're going to want to go check that out. Karen Wilkinson, the author of Stolen Seed, Evil Harvest, and Vicki Joy Anderson, the author of um, They Only Come Out at Night, I've given them five minutes out of my time. So they only have 45 minutes, right? 30 films, 14 books, I have 45 minutes. But I want to bring them up on stage for two reasons. Why? Because they need more platforms. People need to hear their story. Both of them are great presenters. Both of them give incredible interviews. And in some ways, Vicky's a lot smarter than I am, but, but I digress. I mean, she's like, she's kind of a female Derek Gilbert. She's the walking encyclopedia. She's unbelievable, but I digress as usual. So anyway, let me, let me continue here. Um, they're going to be talking about the physicality of sleep paralysis, what it is, and the abduction phenomena. So you're going to want to check that out. I speak twice, once on Friday, I believe, once on Saturday. So let's continue. Um, this is from, uh, I think it's pronounced Gennady. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I've never seen that name before. So, Las Vegas non-human creatures. Dear Brother L.A., I highly respect your ministry and dedication. See, so here's, I just want to, I just want to throw this out. So here we have a, a person emailing us saying, I highly respect your ministry and dedication. And then you can go on a website, on YouTube, and read that I'm a false teacher and I'm a, I'm a prosperity gospel guy. Nothing could be further from the truth. Now, you may think I'm a false teacher. That's fine. Show me where. Show me where. I am definitely not a prosperity guy, prosperity gospel guy. I'm not. I think anyone who knows me and have followed what we do here in our ministry knows that we're not that. I've never said, if you give $10 to L.A. Marzulli, the Lord's going to multiply about seven times. I've never even crossed that. Now, someone will take that out of context, right, and run it up on YouTube. See, he's a prosperity teacher. Oh, my gosh. No, I'm not. I believe that God wants us to prosper. He doesn't want us broken. But, you know, there's a process. There's a process coming out of our brokenness into wholeness. So I'm going to digress here just for a second. Um, 
So I'm, I'm on her opening line, and I'm already down three rabbit trails. I, I will get to this in just a second. There's a process. I'm not the same man I was 44 years ago when I came across the line and gave my life to Jesus. That happened. When that happened, um, things have never been the same since. There's no doubt about it. It was three years of boot camp, of boot camp. When the church was open, I was there. I became a worship leader almost immediately, almost immediately, because I was a musician. I had a band, uh, my band with, with Bob and Norman, full circle. We played at the church one time, and that's another story which I won't get into. But the bottom line was this. Um, Bob, Norman, and myself, we, had, we, we were great musicians. We played all over Los Angeles. We were like, you know... Uh, had had that close to record deals. If I had gotten a record deal, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today, in my opinion. So that's why the Lord has put the music in my music ministry. Uh, you know, I've got all this recorded material, blah, blah, blah. It's on the back burner. This is what I do. And this is why I can give glory to the king, because I'm not doing it. He is. He's the one that led me in this. So there's dedication here in the midst of lots of negative innuendo, false accusations, and on and on it goes. But all I can tell you is that 44 years ago, I was a very, very broken man. And I won't get into the details. Some of you are very, very broken as you're watching this. Maybe you're addicted to drugs. Maybe you've had extramarital affairs. Maybe you're into pornography. Maybe you're a, a petty thief. What I mean by that, you work at a cash register and, you know, you can, you can slip a 10 or a 20 every now and then. Just things like this. Sin is sin. We all know what it is. Maybe you've got an unbelievable anger problem. Maybe you're controlling. You want to control everybody around you. I mean, brokenness, just, it, it just, there's no end to it, okay? In the 44 years that I've been walking with the Lord, he has led me out of that brokenness into a, a degree of wholeness which I never knew or had before. Do I have to watch myself? Absolutely. Do I know what my triggers are now? I do. Absolutely. And I have to watch for triggers. I have to watch them. And then if I am triggered, I have to process that. I have to take it, forgive that person, pray for them, bring the whole thing to the cross, ask the Lord to give me his peace, and, and walk on. We don't have to like someone, but we're required to love them. I don't have to like everybody I see, and I don't. I'll be honest with you. There are people I don't like, but I love them. I love them as Christ of the church. I can pray for them. I don't like their personality. It, it, rub, it grates against me, and maybe I grate against them. Wouldn't surprise me at all, but I am required to love them, which means I pray for them, and I bless them. I don't curse them, and that's a lifelong dynamic that we walk in with him, with Jesus. Okay. Dear Brother Ellie, I highly respect your ministry and dedication. And she has a YouTube video. Uh, Jesus is the Lord of all his creation, and he died and rose on the third day to return our birthrights on our God-given earth lost by Adam to the sons and daughters of God. Be blessed. So, and, and, and the, she gives me a link to a YouTube, which I have not looked at yet. So I'm not sure of what it is. And I'm going to have to get back to you on that. I will put it in my pile of things to look at after the show is done. Okay, can you do a video highlighting the biblical and spiritual significance of werewolves and their historically relevant battle with vampires as it pertains to what we know about, uh, what we know are politicians, Hollywood, the deep set, etc., all being vampires? Um, okay, so this is from Spinebreaker. Hmm. And, and here's the deal. Mr. and Mrs. Spinebreaker. I had a show recently with Chief Joseph Riverwin. It was on Shapeshifters. I would highly recommend and exhort you to go watch that show because you're going to get it from the Chief. You're going to get it from someone who knows about Shapeshifters. I do not believe that everyone in Hollywood is a vampire. Uh, I do not believe that for a second. So, you know, we have to differentiate between fact and fiction. And I, I try to move in fact, not fiction. Are shapeshifters real? Absolutely. Watch the, the video right here on YouTube. You can put it in the search, you know, L.A. Marzulli's channel. Put it in the search bar up above, you know, Chief Joseph Riverwind. And it's on shapeshifters. They are real. There's a price 
that is paid when you become a shapeshifter. And I'm not going to tell you what that is. Go to the video and watch it. So anyway, um, I believe that they are real. People have seen them. And that's basically all I'll say about that. Oh, my gosh. Please don't do this to me. Oh, and it's on the back. You, 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 a question is a question. Like, who was buried in Grant's tomb? That's a question. I can answer that very easily. Grant, okay? So I'm just going to answer this about Paraka skulls. In your genetic study of the Paraka skulls, what specific genes were different? Were they mutated, lessened, or increased compared to a true human DNA strand? We don't know. We don't know that. So, so here's the deal. We are actually, as I speak, we are working on trying to get the genome. All I know is that the mitochondrial DNA, the DNA that we, we found from the Paraka skulls, it showed a Middle Eastern origin. It is not, in my opinion, in, the, in Mondo Gonzalez's opinion, our lead archaeologist. So Mondo and I went down with Richard Shaw, the late Richard Shaw, and Chase Klotsky. Chase tagged and bagged all the samples that we did from 18 skulls, nine from the Inca Museum, nine from Senior Juan's Paracas History Museum. Out of the nine from Senior Juan's, we had a lot of stuff that sequenced. Out of the 58 samples, about 28 of the samples sequenced. They were bone, hair, and teeth in some cases. And so here's the deal. Um, the mitochondrial DNA showed a Middle Eastern, Middle Eastern, uh, or Eastern European origin. That rewrites history. Did we get the genome? No, we did not. We are working on that with a geneticist who will remain anonymous, but we are working on that. Uh, we have several samples, and he has sequenced them, and uh, more about that in the upcoming days, but that's basically all I can say about that. And please don't write War and Peace. Because I, I, just, I just don't have time to do it. Sorry. Uh, let's go into Todd. Uh, Haley, I've been following you for several years. I had a thought of this disclosure letter that is going on. What if the whole point of it is not to control the narrative? What if its main purpose is to test the waters of public opinion? It seems public opinion started w um, with it's all bogus. There are no alien visiting Earth. Then, as the government and other organizations release more info, uh, the public opinion changed to, gee, I wonder what these things are. And as more stories hit the mainstream news, whether it's legit or not, they are looking for a shift to, they are really here and visiting us. So when the general public opinion gets to the point the government knows the public is ready for the full-on great deception, in my opinion, it is not as important to vet the stories as it is to see how people react to it as it is a barometer as to how close we are to the final deception in the end. I hope I explained that. Just a thought. Um, I think that that's great. I think that's exactly, it's not either or, it's both and. They are, I think there are two factions, and I'll end this, this little question and answer by, by just saying this, and then we'll, uh, we'll sign off. But, you know, the bottom line here, folks, is I think there are two factions within the government. There are whistleblowers like, like David Grush, um, like Lou Elizondo, like Commander David Fravor, who have got, and others who have come on the record stating that the phenomenon is absolutely real and that we don't have any technology like this and this is not from this earth. I'm quoting, of course, the best of the best of the best pilot. That's Commander David Fravor, former F-18 pilot. You don't get to drive and fly uh, an F-18 if you're Elmer Fudd. That ain't going to happen. That jet cost millions and millions of dollars. And Fravor was the best of the best of the best. And on Tucker Carlson, that's the first rung on the ladder of disclosure. He looks right at the camera and says, whatever this was, whatever this craft was that moved 50 miles in two seconds like a bullet out of a gun, I'm quoting him, is not from this earth. Folks, it's time to wake up. And they're rolling this out, but there's also pushback from the powers that be that write hit pieces on people like Luis Elizondo. I've read his book, Eminent. He's, Luis is a real stand-up guy. He's a scientist. He's a real smart guy. He's also a very critical thinker and a wonderful observer. They're all saying that the phenomenon is real. The churches, for the most part, won't even deal with it. Don't even talk about it. Even now. Well, that really doesn't concern us, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's because you're completely asleep. It should concern you. How do you create a one-world religious system and a one-world government. You have UFOs appear over the cities of the earth all at the same time. Hello down there. I, I challenge you right now. When, when I'm done the show, go up to your search bar 
and Google hello down there in YouTube. So you're in YouTube now watching this, right? Go to the search bar and, and, and in, place in that, type in hello down there. Watch that minute and a half, 90 second commercial in the 2024 Super Bowl, which cost millions of dollars and the production values through the roof. Watch it. Watch it. This is, in my opinion, is predictive programming. It's telling you and me what's about to happen. I'm not making this stuff up. I'm not making this up. Anyway, folks, thanks so much for watching. If you've got a question, please email me at questions at lamarzulli.net. Questions at lamarzulli.net. Don't forget the Christmas store. Lots of great deals there. Tons of great deals. lamarzulli.com. lamarzulli.com. I want to thank my business partner, Gil Zimmerman, and I. We finished all 10 films on UFOs. Everything's from Close Encounters of the First, Second, Third, and Fourth Kind. Not to mention abductions, crop circles, cattle mutilations, two films on Roswell. Finally, what does it all mean? What is the truth? What is the truth? Don't forget runs of disclosure. Thanks so much for watching. And uh, we'll be back again with more questions in the near future. Thanks.